ok. So, now we will start with our study of dynamic games and the key issue we will now begin to tackle is the issue of information ok. So, first let me ask you this we I kept mentioning that all in all our games uh, the players were playing simultaneously. So, when when do, do you say that players are playing simultaneously? So, let us take the uh, the example that we had uh, that we had looked at in the last class right. It was uh, this this game of matching pennies. I had looked at the asymmetric version, but the, here is the symmetric version. So, the game of matching pennies with a symmetric version is, uh, is something like this. These are the payoffs. So, the uh, players have to put down a penny uh, a coin with either heads uh, up or tails up ok. And if both uh, if both players put up the same face then player 1 gets 1 and player 2 gets uh, player 2 gets minus 1. If both players uh, if one player puts up heads the other player puts up tails then player 2 gets uh, plus 1 and player 1 gets minus 1 ok. This was the situation. Now, what this this game obviously is meaningful if uh, so this was a simultaneous move game. So, what does it mean for players to play simultaneously ok. So, simultaneous if you think about it in the in 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 the in a in the in the, in its English meaning it would mean that they are actually instead putting the coin down at the exact same instance ok. So, physically at the exact same you know cosmic time uh, that is when they are in fact putting down the coin, but that that is not. So, the game remains strategically the same even if they put the coins down one after the other, but without knowledge of what the other one has done right. So, by what we mean by simultaneous really is that the players do not know what the other player has done. So, Simultaneous in a, in a game theoretic or strategic context has not, not so much to do with time as it is to do with information right. If players do not have information of what the other player has done then it is as good as simultaneous is this clear ok. So, the, so now, now consider the following let us take the uh, let us take another game ok. So, uh, so this so let me just write out whatever I just said that this is simultaneous. And we mean that it is simultaneous really means players do not know what the other player has played. this is what it means for a game to be simultaneous ok. Now, uh, here is another game let us uh, this is this is actually a game in with infinitely many strategies for each player. So, a player uh, say suppose there are two players that are producing some homogeneous good two firms let us say they produce a homogeneous good the homogeneous means a good uh, they are producing so, uh, a, a commodity or a good that that can uh, genius a good is homogeneous means that the 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 the, the one that is produced by the, the the thing that is produced by one player is uh, is indistinguishable from that produced by the other okay so what matters is how much they produce not what they produce so long as they are producing the same thing Okay. So, uh, so they that means they uh, so examples are for example, electricity, electricity produced by one plant is the same as the electricity produced by another plant. You know you do not really distinguish between the electrons coming from one plant and the electrons coming from the other. So, there that uh, so, so this 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 sort of a good is a homogeneous good you know are many of the other things that we uh, you know uh, that we use on a day to day basis are homogeneous you know cereals rice wheat etc they are you know it does not matter whether this come from this farm or that farm so long as it's the 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 breed of the of uh, of the of the rice is the same it is it is the same rice right ok. So, 
it, that's not the same in other goods like for example shampoos will be different for different ma shampoo made by one company will be different from that made by the other company toothpaste made by one will be different from the other cars etc etc those are not homogeneous so one thing that we know about home when goods are homogeneous is that what matters is the total supply of the quantity in in the market that determines the price okay and uh, the uh, the price uh, uh, is, ca is can be characterized usually by some sort of a formula you would kind of know what the how the price would behave as a function the market price would behave as a function of the amount of quantity produced all right so in this case so we have two firms producing a homogeneous good suppose qi is the quantity produced by produced by firm i and let us say that the price okay the price uh, the price in the market did is uh, is a function of uh, the quantity is produced by both so it's a function of q1 and q2 and so i am going to and i'll assume it's it has it takes a very simple form i'll assume that it is takes, takes the form 1 minus q1 plus q2 okay so this has been normalized to eventually give you this sort of form okay the price is 1 minus q1 plus q2 so it dip, it's a function of the total production okay uh, that is q1 plus q2 so if this is what the firms are uh, faced with then the firms have uh, what they would do is they well they they each firm has a wants to maximize its profit as a function of its profit is is a function of q1 and q2 so that would be equal to 1 minus q1 plus q2 which is the price times the quantity it has produced which is uh, in this case qi minus the cost that it uh, that it incurs in producing it okay so then let's suppose that is c times qi okay so this is the so this is a cost okay so this is per unit cost per unit quantity okay so this is the uh, this is what these uh, firms produce uh, this is what the objective of each firm is so the each firm wants would like to now decide the quantity it should produce in order to maximize this profit okay now when the firms are trying to decide their quantities simultaneously then essentially what they are doing is they are they are trying to decide what quantity they should produce without knowing what the other would would be doing right so then what what would be the then what the way we would solve for this uh, look for a an equilib uh, a solution for this sort of a situation through the nash equilibrium so can you tell me what would be the nash equilibrium of this game so this ui is actually you can see is actually quadratic and uh, concave in qi okay so you can solve for this can you tell me what it would be so let's let's just differentiate this so let's write this for u1 and u2 so i'll let's di uh, differentiate this and put this equal to 0 with respect to q1 and let's also put this equal to 0 what do we get here so i will get Yeah, can you tell me what this would be? So this will be one minus two Q one plus uh, minus Q two. Mm, yeah, this should be Q one. Sorry, this is Q one minus Q two minus C equal to zero, and then I a similar equation for the uh, from the second one would give me would give me 1 minus 2q2 minus q1 minus c equal to 0 all right so can uh, let's solve this simultaneously and tell me what you get 
1 minus c by by 3 right. Yeah. So, so q 1 you get q 1 star equal to q 2 star equal to 1 minus c by 3 ok. So, this is the Nash equilibrium. So, the Nash equilibrium of this uh, if these of the game where if these players were playing simultaneously would be that they would each choose these quantities 1 minus c uh, 1 minus c by 3 ok. Now, let us take this one step forward and let us ask what if player 2 what if this game was not simultaneous ok. So, what this means is suppose player 2 ok suppose player 2 can observe suppose player 2 can observe what player 1 plays. If player 2 can observe what player 1 plays ok, then what is the strategy of player 2? So, let me go back here. So, first tell me here in this game what were the strategies of the players? They had to decide the amount of quantity to be produced. So, what is the space of strategies? In this case it will be said well I have not put uh, said it explicitly, but it is great it is all non negative numbers right. Any 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 uh, uh, basically the space of strategies is 0 in 0 to infinity is a space of strategies. is for each player ok. Now, what is the now here player 2 can observe what player 1 plays ok. Player 2 still has the same objective it is still profit profit is still given by the same formula ok. So, he is still uh, the the amount the price that will come in the market is still going to be 1 minus q 1 plus q 2 right. The cost is still c times q uh, c times q 2. So, on the face of it nothing seems to have changed in the problem in terms of its specification right. It seems like well the the, the uh, utility function is the profit expression is still the same. The, the price is the same, the uh, the cost is the same, but somewhere something has changed when P2 can observe what P1 can pl has played, right? Because when P2 can observe what P1 can has played, he will obviously play differently. So where is that manifested? Why? No, no. So, what are this? Let's let me ask again this question. So, what are the strategies now of the players? In the other earlier case, the strategies of the players was zero to infinity. Now, what are the strategies of the players? Okay, very good. Why? Mm. Mm. Right, right. So, what are the strategies for the players? See, the, there are. So, this so this is your first introduction to a simple dynamic game. This is a dynamic game is one where players have some. There is some player who has some information which is different from another player. In a simultaneous game every player starts with the, all players start with basically null information, zero information with right. Whereas, here there is player 2 who has the information of what player 1 has played. And when he has this information it makes sense that he picks his quantity then as a function of that information right. If he had say 
see here in this case the information is the amount of quantity that player 1 has produced. If the information was something else like for example, it was informa the information is about the weather or something like that which player 1 did not have then he would pick his quantity as a function of that right. So, the point is that now that player a player has additional some additional information his strategy is not merely to decide how much quantity to produce, but it is to decide how much quantity to produce as a function of what he knows. So, the strategy is not really the quantity the numerical quantity itself, but the function that maps his information to a quantity ok. So, the players players uh, player 2 strategy now strategy is a function from 0 infinity to 0 infinity. So, here we distinguish between two different terms. So, this is what we will call a strategy in a dynamic game. The quantity that he actually produces and that is what in fact eventually influences his cost and his, uh, his his eventually influences his profit uh, is that that is what is called action ok. The quantity that he produces is the action. So, q 2 here this is his action and q 2 is chosen as a function of his information information being q 1. So, let us call this function gamma 2 this here is his strategy and it is chosen as a function of q 1 this here is his information. Is clear? So, the uh, so strategies now are whenever you are in a dynamic game strategies now necessarily become functions ok because there is someone has some information which is non trivial right. So, the fun the strategy for that player is a function then from that goes from his uh, from his information to his action all right. So, the the an immediate shift that you see when you go from a static or simultaneous move game to a dynamic game is that the problem necessarily goes into function space because now everything has to be dealt with in the space of functions all right. So, we, those of you have taken my stochastic control course you would have seen this over there as well when you when we write out uh, we cannot write a stochastic control problem in terms of only actions you have to write it in the space of policies right and th that the space of policies there is basically the again the space of functions ok. So, then the reason for that is again because stochastic control is about in at the end of the day about information it is it is about what information you have at at each of at each instant in time. So, because of and because you have to map that information into a into an eventually a control action. This issue is usually moot in the case of deterministic control because there you have to simply see take a sequence of actions uh, 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 and the information and the information is available to you as a look ahead because of the lack of randomness in the problem right ok all right. So, I will not go into that those digressions, but the point is the so now that you are in the, now that p 2 knows uh, uh, q 1 it makes sense that he chooses his he tunes the quantity that he takes based on what q 1 is and you have to allow for him to have that flexi uh, that flexibility. And so, therefore, uh, his strategy then is is a function that maps q 1 to uh, is a function that maps q 1 to q 2. Right. So, so the space of strategies then for player 2 is then the space of all such functions space of strategies let us call it capital gamma 2 this is these functions gamma 2 the gamma 2 maps Now, what is the space of strategies for player 1? 
Yeah, the space of strategies for player 1 is still to pick a quantity, right? He has no information to start off with. So, there are uh, there are two different questions here. One is what is the space of strategies, ok? Means what is the allowable space through which he is picking his picking his op his strategy. The other is what is the optimal strategy that he should be playing, ok? Now, now I am not asking you what the optimal strategy for player 1 is. I am asking you what are this, what is the space through from which his strategy has to be chosen. And the space from which his strategy has to be chosen is simply a quantity. Player 1 has to pick a quantity, player 2 then observes that quantity and then decides. So, in terms of, so the strategy for, uh, for player 2 is a plan effectively, right? It is a plan which says that, ok, you know, if, if player 1 make produces 100 quintals, I will produce so much. If player 2 produces 200, player 1 produces 200 quintals, then I will produce so much. Player 2 produces 300 quintals, then I will produce so much. Essentially, for every value of Q1, he has a, he has a response planned, right? He has a, he has a, he has a plan that gives him uh, a quantity to produce as a function of what player 1 has, uh, has, would hypothetically produce. Player 1 does not have any need to make such plans because he has no, you know, there are no contingent informations for, there is no contingent information for him. He starts, he is the one who starts the game. He, he plays, player 2 observes and player 2 responds, ok. Now, that does not mean player 1 does not have to strategize, that is a different matter altogether, but he does not need to have a, a contingent plan which says that, you know, this is my information, then this is what I will do. If that is my information, then that is what I will do, etc. So, player 1's space of strategies for player 1 is this is still 0 infinity, ok. All right. Now, that we know uh, that these are the space of strategies for the players. So, now tell me how should these players play? Mm -hmm. Ok. So, so now P2, so P2 does, so he will pick find, P2 looks for a quantity such that Q, uh, so Q2 star such that uh, if he looks at his utility from Q2 star, that is better than playing any other other q2. Now, this looks oddly like the Nash equilibrium, but is there something that I have that is different? Yeah. So, a, this is a potential mode of play is what I am writing here. So, what p2 could do is that he could say, well, I will play a q2 star that maximizes this expression. And the what in this expression, what do you observe about q1? q1 is not fixed at a star value. So, this is just some value of q1, right? So, he is going to just take up a, a hypothetical value of q1, find whatever is the maximizing q2, right? Maximizing q2 from here and take that as the q2 star. So, his, his, so then as a result, q2 star will necessarily be a function of q1. Is this clear? So, this is, this is the, the, fun, the, the dependence, the functional dependence that we just said. So, the, so a potential way, mode of play for, for p2 then is to say, well, he could play this strategy, gamma 2 star, let me call this gamma 2, uh, gamma 2 star, where gamma, what is gamma 2 star? Gamma 2 star is, uh, is, is, the, is that gamma 2 star of, of as a function of q1 produces a quantity q2 star, where q2 star satisfies this, right? So, 
So, gamma 2 star for every q 1 will it specifies the quantity q 2 star which which optimizes this. Is this clear? So, q, yeah. Okay. So, now with this in mind, so this is this is a mode of play for for player 2 and what is the mode of play for player 1? If player 2 is going to respond is going to play q gamma 2 star which is basically specifying the quantity that maximizes his utility as a function of q 1. Okay. Now, what is the mode for uh, how should player 1 play? Okay. So, a mode of play for player 1 would now be would now we see the, uh, like uh, like she asked does does player 1 know that player 2 is going to respond okay or player 2 uh, does player 1 know that player 2 can observe player 1's quantity well he, so this is that 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 is known to player 1. So, if the players know that this is the this is what will be known to them okay during the game. So, now that player 1 knows that player 2 is going to respond with q gamma 2 star what player 1 should then play is well he can say well let he can play he can essentially anticipate that that is going to be the response of the player. Okay. So, a, a potential mode of play for player 1 now is to play gamma, uh, q 1 star. So, let me use star star here so that there is no confusion. So, what player 1 would then say is he plays a quantity q 1 star star such that it maximizes the utility that he would get assuming player 2 would respond with gamma 2 star star. Okay. So, assuming taking q 2 to be q 2 as to be equal to gamma 2 star star of q 1 he max he maximizes this over q 1. So, you see one thing that has happened here. So, the there is now a dependence here the the quantity of the other player is not just the quantity that the other player is producing is not fixed in this optimization. The quantity that the other player is producing now is a function of what player 1 would produce. So, player 1 is anticipating that th that player 2 is going to respond in an adaptive way. So, he is going to adapt to whatever quantity I produce and so, keeping that model in mind he optimizes his his uh, he maximizes his profit. Is this clear? So, his so, he is maximizing this knowing that q 2 star star is a function of uh, so, so uh, no, uh, knowing that q 2 star star is a function of q 1. Okay. So, now the in in a game we always assume that the utilities are common knowledge we assume that who knows what at various times uh, who would know what at during the game during gameplay is also common knowledge so gamma 2 star star is something that player that player 1 can in fact compute on his own right he can compute that that is that is what a player 1 would play and then respond and then come as a result he can then compute this whole expression is this clear? So, you can compute this and get his gamma q 1 star star. 